In this video on transforming functions graphs, we learn about the horizontal stretch. Given a function, f of x, and its curve, y equals to f of x, we can stretch this curve in the horizontal direction with the transformation y equals to f of b times x. Now we can tell this is a horizontal transformation because we're modifying the function's input, that is, what's inside the parentheses of f of x. Remember, as soon as we change anything inside these parentheses, we're dealing with a horizontal transformation. Furthermore, we can tell that we're dealing with a stretch because this number b is multiplying x, as opposed to being added to it or subtracted from it. So, this is a horizontal stretch. And in a similar way to the vertical stretch, which was characterized by a scale factor we had to multiply all the y-coordinates by, the horizontal stretch is characterized by a scale factor we'll need to multiply all the x-coordinates by. And that scale factor is equal to the reciprocal of b. So that's 1 over b. And in fact, let me go ahead and box all of that at the top there. Okay, now let's not waste any time and see how this actually works with an example. So here we have our function f of x, which equals to negative x squared plus 8x and its graph is shown underneath here. Notice that this curve crosses the x-axis at the origin, so that's the point with coordinates 0, 0, as well as at 8, so that's the point with coordinates 8, 0. And notice as well that this curve has a vertex, it's a maximum point, with coordinates 4, 16. And to see how horizontal stretches and the scale factor works, let's consider as a first example y equals to f of 2, x. Well, according to what I boxed in red here, this transformation corresponds to a horizontal stretch whose scale factor would be 1 over 2. And so I'll just make a note of that scale factor and I'll say capital S capital F, as in scale factor, equals to 1 over 2. And the scale factor we have here tells us how to get from the graph of f of x to the graph of f of 2x. And here's how. All we need to do is multiply every single x-coordinate of every single point along the curve of y equals to f of x by 1 over 2, or simply 1 half. But of course we can't multiply every single x-coordinate of every single point on this curve because there's an infinite number of them. Instead, we focus on key points on the curve whose coordinates are known. So for instance, the x-intercept we have here at 8, which to be clear has coordinates 8, 0 will turn into the point whose x coordinate is 8 times 1 half. And since 8 times a half is 4, that x intercept will end up right here at 4. Similarly, if we look at the vertex point we have here with coordinates 4, 16, following this transformation, it will turn into the point whose y coordinate is the same, but whose x coordinate will be 4 times the scale factor. So 4 times 1 half. And since 4 times a half is 2, it will be the point right here. And I'll write its coordinates here, that's 2, 16. Finally, focusing on the last point we have, so that's the origin here, whose coordinates, remember, are 0, 0. Well, following this transformation, its x coordinate will get multiplied by 1 half. But since 0 times a half is still just 0, that point will remain the same. And when that happens, we say that that point is invariant, invariant to the transformation. Okay, now that we know what each of these three points will be transformed to following this transformation, all we have to do is sketch the parabola that passes through them. And that would look something like this. There we go. That's the curve whose equation is y equals to f of 2x. Notice that when we compare y equals to f of x, that's the function we started off with, to y equals to f of 2x, the new function seems to be a compressed version of y equals to f of x. And it is. In fact, this new parabola is two times more narrow than the one we started off with. And that's because of this scale factor of one half. And as you look at the transformation we have here alongside the curve we end up with, it may come across as rather counterintuitive. And that's because we're multiplying x by 2, which is a number greater than 1, but the scale factor ends up being 1 over 2, and the curve ends up being more narrow. And if ever that bothers you a bit, make sure to watch this video to the end, as I'm going to spend the last minute or two to explain why that is. 
Okay, now before looking at another example, let me just quickly show you what to do if ever you were asked to find an expression for this new transformed curve. Well, using the expression we have for our function f of x, remember, that's negative x squared plus 8x, to find the expression for f of 2x, all we have to do is copy the expression for f of x, but replace every x we see by 2x. And my advice is to always write that 2x inside a pair of parentheses. Here's what I mean. We can state that y equals to f of 2x is equal to negative in parentheses 2x squared plus 8 times in parentheses 2x. Next, since the 2 and the x are being multiplied inside this pair of parentheses, the power of 2 that we have on the outside will simply distribute onto both the 2 and the x. So this turns into negative 2 squared times x squared plus 8 times 2x. Now, these parentheses can be removed, and so this turns into 8 times 2, which is 16, times x. So that's 16x. Finally, since 2 squared is 4, we can state that the new curve we get has equation y equals to negative 4x squared plus 16x. And we're done. Let's look at another example, example 2. Now, still working with the same function f of x, consider the transformation y equals to f of x over 3. Well, first of all, let me start by saying as soon as you have a transformation like this one, where x is over some denominator, and in this case it's over 3, so x is being divided by 3, it's important to realize that this can be thought of, and in fact rewritten as, f of 1 over 3 times x. Written this way, we no longer think of the input x as being divided by some number. Instead, we can see quite clearly that it's being multiplied by a number. And so we realize that again we're dealing with a horizontal stretch. Now that that's established, let's find the scale factor for this horizontal stretch. Well, going back to what I boxed at the very beginning of this tutorial here, if b is the number multiplying x, the scale factor is 1 over b. And so the scale factor, capital S, capital F, is equal to 1 over 1 third. And to divide 1 by 1 third, all we have to do is multiply 1 by the reciprocal of 1 third. In other words, this is equal to 1 times 3 over 1. And that's equal to 3. And that's the scale factor. And so in this case, since the scale factor of our horizontal stretch is 3, to obtain the curve y equals to f of x over 3 from y equals to f of x, we multiply the x-coordinates of y equals to f of x by 3. And once more, we do that for the three key points we're given here. So let's see, for the x-intercept at the origin, the x-coordinate is 0, and if I multiply 0 by 3, it stays 0. So the origin will stay right where it is. On the other hand, if I look at the x-intercept, which is at 8, its x-coordinate is 8, and if I multiply 8 by 3, it turns into 24. And 24 would be right here. Next, looking at the vertex whose coordinates were 4, 16, this will be transformed into the point whose y-coordinate is 16 and whose x-coordinate is 4 times the scale factor. So that's 4 times 3, which is 12. And that would be this point right here. And I'll just write 12, 16. Finally, all I have to do now is sketch the parabola passing through these three points, which would look something like this. And there we go. That's the curve of y equals to f of x over 3. And if ever we were asked to find this new curve's equation, all we have to do is use the expression we have for f of x, so that's negative x squared plus 8x, and replace every x we see by x over 3. And again, I'll do that by writing x over 3 in parentheses. So let's see, the curve of y equals to f of x over 3 is equal to negative x over 3 in parentheses squared plus 8 times x over 3. And now this power of 2 goes on to both the numerator and the denominator. So this turns into negative x squared over 3 squared, which is 9, plus... 8 times x over 3. And since there's only one term inside this pair of parentheses, we can get rid of them. And remembering that when we multiply a fraction by a whole number, only the numerator gets multiplied, 
So this turns into 8x over 3. And we're done. Now looking back at this function's curve and comparing it to the original curve we started off with, we notice that y equals to f of x over 3 is 3 times wider. And that's because of this scale factor of 3 that we have here, which remember resulted from multiplying x by 1 over 3, or 1 third. And just as for the previous example, you may find that rather counterintuitive. And the reason why both of these examples, as well as horizontal stretches in general, may seem a little strange, is because the scale factor is the reciprocal of the number we're multiplying x by. And so I'll finish this tutorial spending a bit of time explaining why the scale factor is 1 over b. So let's go ahead. I'll start by making a bit of space, like so. To really understand how horizontal stretches work, the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the input value. And so if I start just by writing f of x here, f of 2x here, and f of x over 3 right there. When working with the original function f of x, the input for our function is just x. On the other hand, when working with f of 2x, the total input that goes inside the function is 2 times x, or just 2x. Now, 2x increases 2 times faster than x does. And in fact, I'll write that underneath. That's 2 times faster. And what that actually tells us is that for this function, all of the possible inputs are being fed to f 2 times faster. And consequently, all of the output values, so all of the y-coordinates, are encountered in half the amount of time or rather for x values half as large. And that's confirmed when we look at the curve of y equals to f of 2x. Indeed, it's half as wide as the original curve y equals to f of x. On the other hand, when we consider f of x over 3, the total input that's being fed to the function increases 3 times slower than it does for f of x. And I'll write that underneath, that's 3 times slower. And so for instance, if we wanted the total input in our function to be equal to 3, then for f of x, that would happen when x equals to 3, but for f of x over 3, that would happen when x equals to 9. In other words, the x value has to be 3 times bigger. And that can be seen on the curve of y equals to f of x over 3 from the fact that it's 3 times wider than the curve of y equals to f of x. And so we see that when the input is 2 times x, the curve ends up being half as wide, but when the input is x over 3, in other words, when x is multiplied by one third, the curve ends up being three times wider. But let's make that fact more formal by bringing to light the scale factor of one over b for each of these two functions. For that, I'll consider the vertex we had on our original function, y equals to f of x, and show that to find the vertex on each of the two transformed curves, we need to multiply the x-coordinate by the scale factor one over b. Now, the original vertex had coordinates 4, 16, and in fact I'll write that here, the vertex had coordinates 4, 16 on f of x. Now, the fact that f of x passes through this point tells us that for the input 4, the output must be 16, which we could write as 16 must be equal to f of 4. But what about f of 2x? Well, we know that the vertex will also have a y-coordinate of 16, since this transformation is a horizontal transformation, and it therefore won't affect the y-coordinate. But what about the x-coordinate? Well, as we just said, we know from f of x that the output 16 is produced when the input is 4. But remember, the input for f of 2x is 2x. So 2x must be equal to 4. And to solve this equation, we need to multiply both sides of it by 1 half leading us to x equals to 2. And this 2 is the x-coordinate of the vertex for this function. And so I can write that here. The x-coordinate is 2. Working in a similar way for f of x over 3, we know that the vertex, again, will have a y-coordinate of 16. And to find what the x-coordinate would have to be, we need to find when this input value x over 3 equals to 4. And that leads to the equation x over 3 equals to 4. And we solve this equation by multiplying both sides of it by 3, which quickly leads us to x equals to 12. And that's the x-coordinate of the vertex for f of x over 3. And I can write that here, that's 12. 
Now, what this quick investigation brings to light is the scale factor we have to multiply the x-coordinates of f of x by to get the x-coordinates on the transformed curves. And here's what I mean. Remember, the vertex had an x-coordinate of 4. And in our equations, that's the value here and here. And to find the corresponding x-coordinate on each of these two transformed curves, we multiplied by 1 over 2, that was for f of 2x, and by 3, that was for f of x over 3. And these values are the scale factors for these horizontal stretches. And we could repeat what we just did to find the x-coordinate of the vertex for every single point along these curves. And we'll always find the same two scale factors. And that's because we'll always end up with equations like the ones I'm boxing right now, in which the left-hand side is the input for the transformed functions, and the right-hand side is the original x-coordinate on the curve of y equals to f of x. In other words, for any curve of the type y equals to f of b times x, when working out the x-coordinate like we've just done, we'll always be faced with bx equals to 4. And so the x-coordinate on the curve of y equals to f of bx will always be obtained by multiplying both sides of this equation by 1 over b, and will therefore always be equal to the original x-coordinate, so in this case that was 4, times 1 over b. And that's the scale factor. And here I showed it for the x-coordinate 4, but it could have been any x-coordinate on our original curve y equals to f of x. And that's why for horizontal stretches, the transformation is y equals to f of b times x, and the scale factor is 1 over b. And there we go. That's it for this video on transforming functions graphs, and hopefully we now have a good understanding of the horizontal stretch.